Come on, welcome to the show. You look fantastic. Thank you, bud. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. I couldn't disappoint you. No, you never <laughs> disappoint me. I, you, tell me about this. Though. You explain it a little bit in Relentless, uh, but congrats on the on the new book here, uh, the winning first of all. But you you started. You didn't start as a trainer. Or you did? Well, here's the thing. I did start as a trainer, so when I went to college, I didn't know what I wanted to do like everybody else. Mm -hmm. So I in there, kinesiology was just getting started. I said, But yeah. your parents were fine with this? No, they weren't. Not at all. No. Both my parents come from India. Okay. All right? So back in the 80s, as a son of Indian parents, you got two options for a profession. Uh -huh. Doctor being one, mm -hmm. and doctor being the other. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I told him I wanted to train professional athletes. He goes, what does that even mean? Yeah. Yeah. You get vacation time, you get a two-week <laughs> paycheck. I said, no. I said, I'm going to train professional athletes and, you know, behold everything I went through and it ended up happening. Yeah. And you just did it. But, th but then you, you, you get in there and you have the opportunity or you just said, I'm going to train someone from the Bulls. I was working at a local health club. I was making $3.35 an hour back in the 80s. That was my minimum wage. I know yours was seven fifty. I did some homework on you now. Wow, yeah, I did. I got so seven fifty. Well, seven fifty. Yeah, yeah. I, I pay started, attention. I started yeah. as soon as I could start working, but that that's was... exactly what I did. Yeah. You know, you sit at home. You can't be sitting at home. You finish school. You're like, all right, got to do something. So I took a job at a local a local health club. Stayed there for about three years. I saw a small article in the newspaper that said Michael Jordan's tired of taking the physical abuse from the Detroit Pistons. Hmm. Light bulb moment. So back then, remember, no cell phones. No texting, no nothing. No. Hand wrote 14 letters. 15, 15 players on the team did not write to Michael Jordan. He's the best. I've never worked with a professional athlete. He'll make not, it. He, nah, there's, no, there's just no way. He's, yeah. gonna he's not, no way. One person, he found the letter in somebody else's locker, gave it to the athletic trainer and said, hey, find out what this kid's about. Lesson learned, the best of the best always are looking to get better. Wow. Always looking to get better. This is you training Michael Jordan. Yeah, with the mustache. Now, that's the only picture you can find, huh? That's it. Yeah. That's so you look good. Picture. You look great. You, you, talk, you look fantastic. That's the only picture you can find. <laughs> but I mean, this is uh, at, at his peak uh, here with the Bulls. What, what were these training sessions like? Very, very intense. Very intense. It would be either 5 a.m. in the morning, 6 a.m., or 7. That was our time that we wanted to get, we wanted to get the workout, workouts in. And they were very intense. And I was doing stuff back, we're talking about 89, 90. I was doing back stuff where people are just discovering now. I mean, we did the crazy, we did the craziest things. I did stuff for his fingers. I did stuff for his wrists. I did stuff for his, his ankles. fingers? And yes, because in basketball, your fingers are constantly jammed. You have to have the dexterity. You know, if you're playing a piano, that's how you control a basketball. So different things that weren't taught in school, but I just knew were right. You know, you got to trust your instinct. You just got to know, hey, this is, this is the right way to do things. So, you know, we'd have sometimes, I would literally go home after a game, and this crowd may be a little bit too young to understand this, but you had to record a game on a machine called a Betamax. <laughs> Anybody know what a Betamax is? <laughs> All right. We'll explain what we'll a Betamax explain, is. We'll explain yeah. what it is. Wow, you were yeah. on Beta. Betamax. You made that investment. Yes, wow. I had to. Yeah, it was a bad one. But it was yeah. That right. <laughs> <laughs> was the only investment bad one yeah, you made. It yeah, it was bad. I did it was bad. But I would go back home, and we'd be the last ones to leave the stadium and so forth, because I never worked for the Bulls. I actually worked directly for him. So I'd go back home, and I would literally watch the game over again, not for the highlights, to count his steps. You actually counted how many steps he took on the court. How much he, how many steps he took left, how many steps he took right, how many times he landed on one foot, how many landed on the other foot, all these, all these different things because I was like, okay, well, if one side is being used more than the other, well, we can't train him the same way. We can't train him the same way. So I would hand him weights and one hand would be completely different than the weights on the other. The reps on one side would be completely different than the other. Just different things. We did stuff for his eyes. We created all kinds of distractions. Just stuff that I knew that would, that would work, that would just work. And he was open to it. He was like open because he was just like, man, just I don't want to do what everybody else is doing. If I do what everybody else is doing, I'm going to be like everybody else. Yeah, and he, and he just wanted to win. He's like, I, I'm, I'm his going to. His obsession with winning. Yeah. He knew there was a price that needed to pay for winning. And he was, most people, everybody knows you got to pay a price for winning. But most people aren't willing to pay it. They may pay it once, but literally you got to pay it every single day. And the crazy part about that, 
is the price changes daily. Just like the stock market goes up and down, the price of winning changes on a daily, daily basis. And you got to be willing to pay that price, whatever it is on that day. Is that, is that why like all of your, uh, you make points, it's almost like a, I don't say it's a 10 step program or something like that, but it's usually like you see the 10 steps on becoming successful. Sure. The 10 step, all of your steps are named number one. Yes. Number one, do this. Number one, do that. Number one, do that. Number one, number one. They're all number one. Right. Why? Not a typo. No. Not a typo. So here's the thing. With my ideas, is, and the audience can relate to this, when you get a list, you see things one, two, three, four. People pay attention to one, not as much to two, eight. When you get down to 11, 12, they're like, eh, it doesn't, doesn't matter. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't matter. If you put list everything as number one, and I knew all of these were equally as important, but what was number one, what was the most important thing, what your number one may not be somebody else's number one. So you can take that list and interchange it to, to your definition and your vision of winning and your vision of relentlessness. Take it and just like, hey, you know what? Today I need this to be my number one. Yeah. But that doesn't mean, dis, dis, doesn't mean discount the other stuff. I, I, I was in, so inspired by Relentless. I, I loved it so much. Do, do you have ever, people coming up to you and saying like, Wow, this book changed my life. I, I have people come to me all the time and say, the book changed my life. And you know what I do is, is I didn't the book didn't change your life. You changed your life. The book just gave you permission. It gave you permission. You know what Relentless did to a lot of individuals? It gave them, they understood they're not alone. They yeah. were not alone. That this mentality, everyone thought, man, I thought I was the only one. I thought I was the only one. And when they read the book, they were like, wow. This, there's a lot of us like this. There's a lot of us that have that same mentality. Uh, I, I read the book, and then I also got the audio book, by the way. Uh, and uh, who, who helped you with the book as well? My agent, my business partner, and my co-author, Sherry Wank. Sherry Wank, who I met backstage. Yes, She's she fantastic. Did. She is fantastic. She's one of the reasons I'm here, folks. Give it up for her. Yeah, absolutely. Please. She really is great. And if you like the book, you, you, you get the audio book and there's extra stuff and you guys yes. having conversations and then, it, so it's a little bonus stuff, but I did that as well. And whoever you got to read the audio book, by the way, was fantastic and his voice was very intimidating. <laughs> and I was like, wow, it was really great. I loved it. Uh, can we talk a little bit about Kobe Bryant? Yes, we can. Here's you, mm. no mustache, with Kobe. Yes. Uh, a suit that didn't fit, but back then, that was, well, maybe not, it wasn't a style, but that back then, that's what I wore. <laughs> yeah. All right, I would yeah. say. <laughs> what can we say about uh, uh, Kobe, his style of, of training? I mean, he's just, the definition of winning, man, it was, un it was unbelievable. You know, when you ask individuals, it was funny, I asked all my clients, including him, I said, listen, describe winning in one word. And, you know, you get a lot of individuals that tell you, you know, it's joyful, it's happiness, it's fun, it's all these other things. But the true winners, that's the end of winning. That's at the end of winning. But when you have to really describe winning, what it really means and what it takes, it's, you know, it's unapologetic, it's dirty, it's nasty. If you go through all those things, then you get to the joy part. Then you get to the end. But it's all the obstacles in between. It's about the grind and knowing you're grinding for a purpose. You know, individuals always say, listen, yeah, I'm grinding, I'm grinding. Everybody say, man, I'm grinding for success, I'm grinding for this. Well, if you take two pieces of object and you just grind them together, what happens? It turns into dust. Yeah. But when you see people do ice sculptures or you see clay or art or, you know, if we have any artistic individuals out here, they grind away the unessentials to form what they need, what that piece is going to look like. And that's what Kobe did. That's what Kobe did. That's what Michael did. That's what Dwayne did. That's what all these individuals do is they grind away the unessentials so they can have this sculpture of what winning looks like for them. And it looks different for each individual. As slight as it may be, it's different. Yeah. Just a little bit different. Uh, I can't even tell you. This is exactly what you read. In this book... It's helped a lot of people, and uh, you were nice enough to bring a copy of Winning for everyone in our audience tonight. Come on. Not tonight. I, I, knew, I knew you'd be great. Come on. Thank you so much for coming to see me. Come back, please. I, I promise. Thank you. Anytime. You will, thank thank you. you. Tim Grover, check out his book, Winning, which is available everywhere. Hey, hey.